thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. This is amazing. A uh, hundred and forty years, the Westminster. How about that? Unbelievable, right? We uh, <laughs> Westminster is the second longest continuously held sporting event in this country, behind only anyone. Doesn't anybody read all this stuff that I write in press releases? <laughs> <laughs> the Kentucky Derby. There we go. About Known that. for By their just hats. just one year. Known for the hats, right? The Kentucky, we don't, yeah, big we hat don't have car. hats at the dog show yeah, yet. Yeah, there's the hats there as well. 140 years. That is absolutely astounding. And this time of year, super busy for you guys. I saw, I think on Twitter, you were at the closing bell for NASDAQ yesterday with about 20 other dogs, right? Or so, I did, so. and I'd like to point out that NASDAQ closed up. Two and a half points for the day. So. Of course. Of course it did. Happens often with the dogs. I think we've done it about eight years, and I think six of those years it's, it's been up. So. That's so cool. Uh, there was a really great video of it uh, that I saw on Twitter that the Nasdaq had posted uh, of just the bell ringing and all the dogs. Just, I, I was wondering about that, like the bell ringing and all that commotion. How do they respond to that energy in that room? Oh, they get fired up too, we, and we want them to be a part of it. So they're howling and barking and looking around and having a great time. You know, these show dogs are used to being somewhere where it's noisy. Right. People are poking and prodding them, whether it's a judge or somebody walking around in the benching area. So they're very well-adjusted dogs. They don't just sit around eating doggy bonbons on doggy cushions. <laughs> doggy know. bonbons. But is that an official sponsor of the, uh, the Westminster? <laughs> yeah. It is now. I'm going to start go. marketing that. Let's get it going. Now that making I'm it happen. Uh, well, no, that's absolutely, you know, it's funny. You, you said earlier backstage that you, uh, you guys tend to shut places down when you walk in. So I imagine no different there. We, you walked into the offices, and everything came to a grinding halt. Everyone had to come see the dogs, say hello to the dogs. So that's something you guys are accustomed to. You see that everywhere you go. Right? Well, you know, Westminster really is a celebration of the dogs in our lives, whether it's a show dog or, the, or a, not a show dog or a mixed breed dog or a purebred dog. Westminster now has activities that involves mixed breed dogs, the agility on Saturday, obedience on Monday. So those are both open to, as the AKC calls them, all American breeds. All American dogs. So uh, we really want Westminster to be more than just the world's greatest dog show, which it already is. But we want it to be inclusive and, and help teach people about dogs and to teach people about responsible ownership as well. It's really, uh, it's, ama it's an amazing uh, program, right? Not just the, the dog show. All those things you guys do is outstanding. I was wondering, other than the NES, what are some other like uh, fun traditions that you guys do around this time of year with all the excitement? What are some of the, the crazy things you guys get to do with the dogs? Well, well, we do things that are associated with the dog show, like you'll look up on, uh, I believe it's going to be Sunday night this year, or maybe, no, no, it's Tuesday night because Monday is President's Day. Uh, the Empire State Building will be lit in purple and gold, which are Westminster colors. It's uh, them welcoming the dog show to town. But, you know, we've been at the Garden yeah. for, ever since our beginning in 1877. It wasn't even called Madison Square Garden. Then it was Gilmore, Gilmore's Garden in, uh, in Madison Square Park. So after about three years it started, it was then renamed Madison Square Garden. It was rebuilt on the spot. We stayed there through it all. It was rebuilt over on 40. 8th Street, and then it was rebuilt where it is now. So we've been in all four versions. There's only two other organizations that have been in the garden, all four versions of the garden, and they're no longer there. It was the horse, the National national Horse Show and, uh, and the circus. So we're still great partners with, with the garden. We do lots of fun things. One of the things that we do on Wednesday after the dog show, uh, we go to Sardi's with the best in show dog, and the dog is fed steak on a silver platter. <laughs> so it's a great photo op, but the dog, I think, isn't thinking of the photo op at all. He's only no. thinking of the steak. He earned it, right? That, I, yeah. I imagine you must be outstanding at like a bar trivia night. The amount of facts, <laughs> that, you, that is so fascinating. And that's, you know, when I said, we were some people were super excited to hear, it's not just because of the dogs. Uh, you've been in the game for a while. Some of the, the little bits of information and facts you have. This is your 27th year, is that right? 27 years started in 1990 when we had 142 breeds and varieties in the show. Now oh, this yeah. year we're going to have 199. So that's, it's changed a lot through the years. In that respect, but you know, who would have thought this? I showed dogs. I had a great Afghan hound, uh, Zumi, that was the top Afghan in the country and retired as the top winning female in the history of the breed. That's what brought, landed me here right. somehow from Seattle, Washington. And uh, it's just been an amazing thing uh, personally because I never had a dog growing up. Right. I, I got into it because my college girlfriend, as I was moving into my own house, said, let's get a dog. I said, well, sure, you know, guys will do anything if, you know, 
the, the woman asks. That's why I have a boxer. And uh, I love him, don't get me wrong, but that's exactly how it happened. That's it. Well, we got the Afghan hound, and three weeks later, the girl left, and the dog stayed, and it was the best thing that could have happened to Andy yeah. Lewis. That's, so <laughs> you, you came over from Seattle. It was interesting. I was, I was doing a little research. You, uh, you worked PR for, uh, for Buffalo at the NFL and for a couple of teams over there, uh, and then you were at NBC Sports, and then Westminster. Uh, the natural progression of that career path, right? Like, how did well, it started. My first job was with, and uh, and go ahead and applaud the Denver Broncos. Congratulations, <laughs> Super Bowl champs. And I was there uh, in the in the late '70s when they went to their first Super Bowl, and I have a Super Bowl ring of my own. But the ring that, that is I'm so wearing cool. tonight, you may have noticed, uh, is my father's Super Bowl ring. After I was there, he came to the Broncos and worked for them for 20 years and died in February, right around the dog show 15 years ago. But when he died, with great foresight, uh, he died with five Super Bowl rings and five children. Wow. So we each got one of his rings. I wear this one every year in February in his honor, and I get the chance to talk about him. But, really cool. you know, you can't walk around New York City with a ring like this on your hand. No. <laughs> so it sits <laughs> in a safety neighbor. deposit box most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, that's really cool. Um, so 27 years. Uh, bittersweet. This is, I believe, is this your last year? Announced my last year of doing Westminster. I know. Uh, it is going to be, I'm sure, about 10 o'clock on Tuesday night. The, the melancholy will yeah. roll on in there, but uh, I'm still going to be doing the National say, Dog Show on NBC. Silver lining, right? Nobody panic. He's weaning <laughs> us off. He's not leaving us entirely. We'll still, Thanksgiving time, we'll still get to hear you, and you'll still be there with us, right? Still doing that, and yeah. uh, my, I have a, I'm under contract now for NBC full-time, and Cool. And uh, and in my job description, it says other projects. So I like that. Stay tuned. Could be anything. <laughs> Could literally be anything. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations uh, on Thank the, uh, you. the future opportunities and uh, 27 amazing years. As we're talking about uh, 140th year boxer uh, and your 27 years. <laughs> Good. You got to do that you're too, right? To when you see now. like you're, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what what are we looking at here as we're talking? These this are was the past winners. Westminster's first show was held in 1877, mm -hmm. but we didn't award best in show for the first time until 1907. Yeah. Just uh, it, they just didn't get around to it till yeah. then. So um, these what, are the best in show winners over those hundred. What, what were what were they if they weren't awarding best in show? What were they doing? Just that's yeah, a pretty. It good was dog. just a bunch of different prizes. They really were not particularly well organized because. Uh, th there were no particular breed definitions at gotcha, that point. Gotcha. And a lot of breeds would show up, and, and Westminster would accept the name of the breed as given to them by the owner, and it might have been something completely different. But, uh -huh. but there was a three-legged dog one year, and there was a dogs described as a half, half a Russian terrier and half something else. And so finally, uh, in 1884, with Westminster's help, the American Kennel Club was formed, and they started defining breeds and writing breed standards and saying, here's how you judge them, and that's how the dog shows came to, how be. It came to be. That's pretty cool, uh, and, and really, really interesting. I was wondering, 27 years, what are, in just a couple of years, you were talking about how the, the number of breeds has increased and, and grown so quickly. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, sort of the differences between when you started then and 27 years ago and now. Like, what are some of the biggest differences, the things you've seen change over your time uh, working at the show? Well, I think it's like anything else in this world when you're dealing with li living entities that our nutrition is better, we have better health, or there are dogs are taken better care of. With dogs, however, we originally bred dogs to be our companions and to do work for us, whether it's pull a cart or herd our cattle or, uh, or rescue people or keep the rats out of our kitchen and things like that. And nowadays we have entities that do that. We have pest control. We have, you know, uh, all-terrain vehicles to herd our sheep and things like that. But, uh, so our, our dogs have really become members of our family and they live in our homes rather than live in a garage or live in a barn or live in a yard. Right, right. And, and they are part of the family. They, they sleep on our couches, they steal food off the counters and shed on our black clothes and probably even drink out of a toilet once in a while or the truth <laughs> to be known. But, but uh, that's the biggest difference, I think, in, in what we've seen in the dog show world. That, and, and the dog show world has helped bring that about in that we're not just looking at, at show dogs, we're looking at family pets that, right. that are our pets and members of our family during the, during the week. No, for sure. Well, one of the things, and I love, I love this, I was uh, reading about, uh, is you also work, I want to talk a little bit about um, 
uh, Angels Unleashed, the, the charity that you founded, which is an amazing charity. Tell uh, everybody a little bit about what it is and kind of how it came to be, because I think it's a, a really awesome program. With we have been here with Angel Unleashed before we did a program. It's a therapy dog program that I created at Westminster and, and became such a hit that we uh, moved it out as its own independent 501c3 charity. We create and administer therapy dog programs where our therapy dog teams, which is a, the dog and its human, uh, visit different healthcare facilities uh, and, and in hopes of helping the healing process for people. My own dogs and I, my Cavalier Grace, or my Cavalier Angel, and my Brittany Grace, they've been here before on this stage, uh, and we've talked about the things that they do. They visit at the Ronald McDonald House, the p pediatric oncology. They visit at the Veterans Hospital right up the street here. Uh, they visit at uh, Sloan Kettering and a number of other places where um, just having them there makes a difference to people. You know, a dog walks into the room, we're about to find this out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we Believe are. it or not. Yeah. <laughs> we, when a dog walks into the room, the energy changes, you know? That, yeah. Or, or, or people come flooding over from their workspace and say, well, it's... <laughs> Didn't get it done because Oblio was here. Yeah. And, you know? So uh, that's the first step. The energy changes. People, sm people smile. Kids smile. They talk when they maybe they haven't been talking for a while and start to think about things other than the challenges they're facing. So it's, there's nothing like visiting the Ronald McDonald House and visiting with the kids and have a parent look at you and say, that's the first time she smiled all week. And to have those kinds of things happen or to have a veteran... Uh, I, I'm going to tell you one quick story about the VA hospital, and then I, we'll get to the dogs. But um, there was a, a media crew, a TV crew, following me around with Grace, my Brittany, uh, one time at the VA hospital. And we came upon a room where I didn't know the patient. We visit once a week, so sometimes the patient turnover is such that we don't see people more than one time. And I asked the nurse who was accompanying us, I said, how about this guy? And she says, oh, no, we can't go in that room. And she says, he's... Uh, almost 90 years old, he's in the early stages of dementia, he speaks in gibberish, and he, and he yells when you come in a room because it's upsetting to him. I said, well, you know what, that sounds like exactly the kind of guy we ought to go visit. So Grace and I went in there, and, and this guy lit up, and he, he smiled. I took Grace and lifted her up to his bed, and he put his hands on either side of her head and started to talk to her in gibberish, <laughs> but he was talking to her and smiling, and then he turns to me and starts talking to me. I slide Grace into bed. Uh, she's got his, her head on his shoulder and laying there next to him. And he's talking to me in gibberish. And I'm responding. I said, that's right. She's been coming here five years. Um, she is beautiful, isn't she? And he'd say something else in gibberish. And I'd say some that was probably gibberish to some people, but I thought it was something coherent. And then uh, I looked over at the nurse, and she was crying. Because she had never seen this guy do that. But just to have that kind of impact on people and, and bring them some, mom, some lucid moments maybe. But. It's, it's so, so amazing and, and, and so cool. What's, what's a way that uh, people can support the organization? How, can, can their dogs be involved? Can they be a part of it? Like, what are some of the requirements? Like, can they help and do this and make these visits as well? Come to visit our website, angelonaleash.org. And, and read about how you go about the process. We do have training classes. You need to go through a class and need to become ev be evaluated and, uh, and register with a national organization, and then uh, we'll help you find a place to visit. But uh, you're gonna change people's lives. You know? Maybe you're only changing them for, for the three minutes that you're visiting them that day, but, but uh, believe me, you're making a difference, and, and if we can bring you along, that's great. I say great therapy dogs are born, not made. Right. The training class really is more for the human than the dog. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, most dogs are good at it. Some humans need a little help. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're there to help and, and get people. We want more therapy dogs in more places. So Angel on a Leash uh, does a lot to do that. We've been in existence now since 2004. And uh, we're doing great things. I'm proud of our dogs and our people that do those things. Cool. Well, you should be. And thank you for all that amazing work. Thank, thank you, you, Matt. Thanks for, for asking. Of course, of course. Uh, and thank you again for 27 years of outstanding uh, work with the Westminster Show. Um, we, you will be missed there, but we will see you on Thanksgiving and hear you there. I think, and you tell me if I'm wrong, uh, I think it's about time we bring these dogs out. Let's out get the dogs out Let's get the, do the dogs. You guys want to see the dogs? are the stars. You guys want to see some dogs? I appreciate the chance to visit, but the dogs are the stars. All right, seven, so seven new breeds this year. Seven new breeds this year. We got three of them with us. Yeah, bring them all on out, and let's talk to them. Oh, my goodness. This is unbelievable. Starting at the first one up here is the miniature, the miniature American Shepherd. 
If you know the Australian Shepherd, um, this is the miniature version of the Australian Shepherd, but they changed it to American because the Australian Shepherd really developed in this country anyway. They just said, now that we've got a chance to, to rename them, we're going to make it the miniature American Shepherd. Now, now these dogs are fantastic. First of all, thank you. Everybody. Round of applause for, the dog, for everybody, <laughs> for all of our dog guests today. Did, why? Yeah, come on over. There's plenty of room. Come on. Come here, Obi. Come here, buddy. Look at this guy. All right, so uh, why, why only now? Are these three part of the seven? What, what takes so long to get this, the seven, uh, these three guys? You know, we say, we, we say new breeds, but they're not really new breeds. Some of them have been around for hundreds of years in other parts of the world. But the recognition for competition comes in this country when the AKC decides that they've met all the requirements. That is, there's got to be enough of them in this country. They've got to have a geographic distribution. They can't all live on my farm in Texas. Um, and they need to have a parent club that watches out for them, like, like the Borbel Club of America or whatever its official name is, that uh, writes the breed standard by which they're judged and watches over them as they're breeding and, and bringing new, happy, healthy dogs into the, into the world. So it's up to the AKC. When they tell us they're ready, we put them in the dog show. Gotcha. Do you have any sway? Do you ever, do you ever give them a short list of like, hey, guys, uh, these are the ones right here. And you slide it over. Like you huh. write it down, you turn it over, and then you slide it over. I envision like a, a giant boardroom table. You know, it's and a funny. you walk in and just slide over a list of dogs. <laughs> it's a funny thing because not every parent club is enthused about uh, getting this kind of exposure for their dog and, yeah. and becoming a member of the AKC. Um, we, f we saw that with the Jack Russell Terriers a few years ago. The Cavaliers took a while to get here. And, uh, but once they're here, they enjoy what we're doing. They like coming to these things. They like going to NASDAQ. They like coming to the dog show and like being a part of, of the dog show world. Now, we got to hear a little bit. Uh, I mean, we were all fawning over them as they came out. We heard a little bit about the miniature, miniature uh, American, American Shepherd. Shepherd. Um, I don't Herding believe. Herding breed. Yeah, I don't believe I can pronounce this one. Uh, what, what's the name of This uh, is the Bergamasco. The Bergamasco, I can say. Another herding dog. You can see, looks kind of like a collection of mats, but it's, these are called flocks. If, you're, if you know the Commodore, and I think we had a Commodore on with us here um, last year, but uh, it's similar to that, only I think there's like three different kinds of coat that form these flocks. They're for protection. They're for disguise so that they can, uh, can run out with their charges and kind of help keep the predators away. So it weighs, uh, this is Tinia. Tinia weighs about 50 pounds. Really? And, and Donna, uh, Tinia's owner, it happens to be a special education teacher and she takes Tinia to school with her to, as a in, kind of an in-residence therapy dog with all of her. Yeah, you were saying earlier you were working, uh, there's some uh, uh, school kids that are writing or making a book. About, yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about the book? I say uh, we're doing a puppy book for um, for my kennel name, and uh, we're going to have it available online shortly. But we have the whole uh, audio visual department kids. Um, each one was given all my information, and it's about 40 pages long. And they were they had to put it together in a book with pictures, and they it, it took right now it's going on about three months. Um, we, the final projects are done. And they, the school the kids have done a great job with it. And I work at Northeast High School in Philadelphia for 27 years. And, uh, and it's nice to get the whole school involved. Not just does he come to school with me and work with the disabled children. Um, we also have the high school kids involved with the books. And now we're going to put a website together. It's so it's really, really cool. cool. Congrats. See, I love it. I love that you guys are you're doing so much to, to give back to all the different areas of the community and just like it's such a it's such a great thing it's it's uh, it's so amazing i think that's part of why like the energy changes you just, it's just a good vibe it goes back to the yeah. dogs as members of our family you know our, we can our dogs can do so much for people you know people know they know that they feel better when they interact with a dog but now the science is backing that up they show that when you interact with a dog your blood pressure goes down your heart rate goes down your, your respiratory rate goes down, and the flow of the endorphins, the good hormones, increases. So those are all reasons. Once the, once the medical professionals found that out, they started sharing that with the administrators in the healthcare facilities and said, let these dogs in because uh, they can do good things for everybody. So these two breeds are in the herding group. We have four new breeds in the herding group. We'll tell you the other two in a minute. This, this dog, guy. Oh, man. <laughs> it's no surprise, is in the working group. It's, yeah, he is. It's the borble. Roots in South Africa, uh, it's supposed to be a, a farm dog, protection dog to a certain extent. But uh, this is Oblio, 
with Eileen. Eileen, where are you from? You're Virginia, Chesa Chesapeake, Virginia. Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, Oblio pulled her all the way up in a cart today. <laughs> it, what a magnificent animal. I mean, you can just read that with, in this dog. And you can read it in all of them. But a dog with no coat, um, it's all there. There's no secrets. And, and uh, Oblio is really my first exposure uh, to the breed over time. And uh, he is spectacular. But he does things. They're supposed to be big, strong, powerful dogs. Right. But this dog, he does other things, too. He does lure coursing, which is chasing a lure through an open field. Um, he started in on agility, which uh, we hold the Westminster holds agility on the Friday before the dog show. Um, and he's, he's got great things. Our dogs are athletes. They really are. No matter if they're sitting next to you on the couch, those little guys can do just as much as their older, larger cousins can do. Amazing. Uh, I, I would like, if possible, I'd love to have the dog stay with us on stage and we'll open it up for audience Q&A. Let's try to limit the number of requests to pet them. Uh, we'll we'll <laughs> sort that out in a minute, but we are live. So let's go with questions and then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. First Hi. one right up front. If you could be a dog, what breed would you be and why? <laughs> See, I'm the dog guy. I'm not supposed to show any prejudices there, but my own breeds are a Brittany uh, and a Cavalier. I had Afghan hounds for 30 years. I like the athletic dogs. I love my Brittany because she's got a great temperament, a great personality about life, uh, likes to do things and do them at full speed. My Cavalier's not too far behind on that, but my Cavalier kind of likes sitting on people's laps most of the time. <laughs> uh, don't mind me. You guys keep going. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna hang out here. How's it going? Uh, I want to know what's the funniest thing you've ever seen a dog do in the show. Well, you know, they do what they do because uh, it's a dog show and sometimes it's an embarrassing moment for the handler when the dog stops and does something in the ring that they're not supposed to do. But most of the time, it's, it's, you watch them in the ring and they're supposed to be you know, so well trained and not take a wrong step and not do anything that shows they have a personality. We, think, we, we, we sometimes mistakenly think they're supposed to be little robots out there doing their job. But when the dogs run over to the side of the ring and, and step up to have somebody pet them or, or say, say hello to a child or something like that, kind of like Cam Newton handing the ball over to the, the child in the front row, these dogs do that kind of thing too. But, um, but as far as funny, I don't, you know, it's just a moment. The dogs, the, the chihuahua challenging the Great Dane in the ring or something like that that, uh, that, that tells us the same thing that we know, that chihuahuas are just a big dog in a little package. And... <laughs> and uh, that, uh, that the dog in the ring is not unlike your dog. Next. Area. Hello. I just wanted to know, what does it take to be a Westminster winner? Do the dogs go to school? Do they prep? How do the dogs win? It's an open competition that uh, dogs have to have won a major, uh, which means they have to have defeated a certain number of dogs in competition before they're eligible to enter. Um, that's changed from about four years ago when our requirement was that all dogs had to be champions. And that was because of space that we had at the garden. Now that we've moved the daytime judging, the breed judging on Monday and Tuesday up to Pier 92 and 94, we have more room, so we've opened it up a little bit more. Our limit is 2,800 dogs instead of 2,000 that it was our last year at the garden. But, um, but that's the basic requirement. And then once they're in there, uh, they've got to compete with all of them. So they better be pretty well prepared because it's the, the one time all year where all the great dogs are in the same place at the same time. Right. Uh, well, I believe we have time for one more question. Hey, uh, since we're in New York, I was wondering if you could recommend a breed for apartment living or different breeds for apartment living. Well, I'm very biased. I, the, uh, it, it depends, really. I, you know, people say, well, geez, I've got to have a little dog. You don't necessarily have to have a little dog, although they do, the big dogs do take up some space on the floor perhaps, but, but some of them don't have moderate energy like Greyhounds or Great Danes. They're great apartment dogs. They, they, ask about they need a little about, exercise, yeah. but they're not crazy in there. I'm not sure I would get... Don't listen. Uh, no. no, no, we have. We have a number that live in the... We do have a number that live in the city as long as their owners like exercise and get them out. And, and go to the park with them, and they've been very, very successful. The owners have to be smarter than the dogs is pretty much true of any breed. That's a big commitment. You gotta, it is a big yeah. commitment, but I think, you know, that's to get back to the dog show on television, that's one of the lessons that we try to get out there is we try to tell people what these dogs are like. You know, if you're, 
If you're a runner and you go running two miles every morning, you're not going to want a bulldog or, or a toy dog. Um, if you're sedate and sit around watching television all the time, you're not going to want one of these guys because he's not going to let you do that. And I think those are all things in the Bergamasco. And you can imagine by their job what, what their activity level might be, what their conditioning needs might be, and what their, you can see what their grooming needs are. So uh, I think any dog will work in an apartment if the owner is up to it. But small dogs, I love my Cavalier. She's the first small breed I've ever had. Havanese are doing great things. Um, I say Shih Tzus are the, king, the kings the, of New York City. Walking down the sidewalk, every Shih Tzu owns, owns the sidewalk. So um, I see a lot of Goldens and Labs who are very adaptable to doing anything, of course. Um, yeah. There, I'm sure that all these breeds live in New York City, and, and I've seen them all, all the time. You just don't see very many of certain breeds, and I think that should tell you something. And it's, it, a lot of it is space, but a lot of it is activity level, too, and what the dogs need to be able to do. Perfect. Well, that's a great way to end it. Uh, everybody join me in thanking David again for being here. All of our dog guests, we wish you guys luck. Not that you'll need it. Look at you. Uh, David, when are when, when they all tune in and see the show? The dog show, uh, first of all, agility, the, the Masters Agility Championship is Saturday at Pier 94. Uh, Meet the Breeds, the AKC activity that has all the breeds set up as a Pier 92 and 94 on Saturday also. If you want to come in and see all the breeds uh, uh, lined up in different breed tables, you can go and talk to the, the breed club people and see the dogs up close and personal. On Monday and Tuesday, the, the dog show begins uh, with breed judging at the piers during the day. Uh, the winners of those breeds advance into their groups at night. So that's Monday night at the Garden uh, on television live on CNBC at 8 o'clock uh, for three hours. And then on Tuesday, we do the same thing all over again with the, other, the rest of the breeds. They, those breed winners advance into their groups Tuesday night. That's televised live on USA Network at 8 o'clock. And it culminates with, all this, with each of the seven group winners coming together. One of them is selected as best in show uh, at around 11 o'clock on Tuesday night. Super exciting. Well, thank you so much again for being thank here. You, thank you, Matt. Thanks for having us. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, David Fry, Westminster Dog Show. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.